Hey guys, welcome back to The Detour Live and thanks again for all your likes, shares and subscriptions to youtube.com forward slash Detour Podcast. Does make a difference. I'm your host, Dan Jones, as always joined by four-time national road champion from Australia, Johnny Trevorrow and Jumbo Visma rider and, and national champion as well from New Zealand, George Bennett. GB, welcome to The Detour. Great to be here. You, you're so excited, aren't you? <laughs> you love these podcasts, mate. Let's be honest. <laughs> no uh, swearing on this one. Yeah. Nah, well, well, George doesn't normally swear. It's me and Bills that have got the potty mounts. But um, yeah, I'm mate, trying to clean the clock. I'm trying to clean our show up. We have to. We have to. <laughs> if it's got any sort of future, I think we're going to have to really well develop a swear jar at least and. Maybe we could donate all the proceeds to the Kareka Foundation. But anyway, uh, massive stage of the Vuelta uh, yesterday, stage 17. We tried to look into the crystal ball, Ify, and uh, I don't think anyone predicted Roglic, although we knew, you know, he's hey, the best hey, climate. Did you? you? Look back at your crystal ball, mate. I picked the, I said he would win the stage. You asked you think he'd win like that, though? No, I didn't. I didn't. But before we get on the stage, we've got George on. He's superstar, and we and he's looking very relaxed. So he's obviously not riding in the board. Yeah, I wanted to talk about Roglic. He knows Roglic. That's yeah, what I was going to lean I, into. I know all our lovely fans would like to know a little bit about George. We'll go into okay. all that in a minute, mate. I thought I thought George is a household name. I just assumed. He is, anyway. but our, all our fans they, they don't listen to your other that Kiwi podcast. They don't know what George is doing. Okay, well then so, ask him a question. <laughs> well, I don't know what I'm doing either. <laughs> so, what's your program at the moment, mate? What, what, what's, uh... Uh, everything. I'm doing my own grand tour. I'm not doing the Vuelta, but I'm doing. Um, I've been on the road for for a while actually. L- late minute call up from uh, into Poland. Went straight up to Norway. Then I spent a week doing the. Um, Actually, being a domestic duties, my girlfriend was doing a, a big running race in France, so I went and ran support for that. And then uh, just come back here, and now I'm heading off to Britain. And then from Britain, it's into 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 Italy. So yeah, it's the first year in my career actually since or well, since the start of my career that I that I haven't done the Vuelta. And um, yeah, so it's 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 pretty interesting. Uh, I think I'd rather just knock it out in three weeks than. <laughs> then go all over the show than what I'm doing. What do you right, normally... <laughs> well, okay, now you evolve on his answers. What, what do you normally think of doing uh, the Vuelta? Is it a race that you like to do in the yep. past? Yeah, every year I've always been, I always get up and about for it, except for last year. Last year I was, it was, you know, I did not want to go just because I had a couple of broken ribs and I was, it was November. So I was, I was, um, that was the first year I wasn't completely G'd for the Vuelta, but in the end it turned out to be a great race and I was happy I was there. So, yeah, no, I like the Vuelta. Um, it's a it's just a chilled out version of the Tour. They tend to ride a bit faster than the Tour, which is always weird. You think the Tour would be where the highest speeds are, but it's, it's always the Vuelta. So it's a bloody hard race. Now, insights, the great man Primoz Roglic, uh, if he predicted the win, but there's no way you would have predicted that ride. What were your thoughts uh, on yesterday's stage? Oh man, that guy's got some balls, though. Oh he, yeah, um, yeah. No, I'm, I'm, you know, obviously been his teammate for years and done a lot of races with him. Um, but yeah, still a fan. And and actually, for me, the 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 bit, the coolest thing about that day. Have you seen the photo yet? Where um, Sepp's coming up to get second, and Rogwich is riding down to the bus. And like Sep's like smiling at him, like laughing as he's about to get second. He's still in the middle yeah. of it, like a bunch for him. <laughs> so, that does. Fantastic. Uh, yeah. <laughs> so Primoz had just rolled past him and there's this moment <laughs> where they're looking at each other. And Sep's like laughing and like Primoz is smiling and it's like, oh yeah, casual one, two on the on the mythical Lavos de Cabadonga. So as yeah, pretty do. special from the guys. But we've said a few times with Roglic's racing style, like particularly that stage when he binded on the descent, and everyone's like, why is he taking these risks? Is he such like an impulse rider? Um, no, no, he's not. He's not. He, he doesn't. He thinks about everything, you know. But, um, you know, he, he wouldn't have just random. He would have. He might not have said anything about doing that attack to anybody, but he would have been thinking about it for a while. He doesn't just at that moment go, ah, oh, I'm going. Um, but genius thing of him is he turned that, you know, like a lot of people uh, straight after that were, were giving him shit, you know, like leading the Vuelta, taking these risks, this and that. 
And some genius marketer from behind the scenes turned this into a whole line of very successful merch with the no risk, no glory tagline and suddenly turned an absolute loss into a win. So he's done well there. Um, but yeah, no, I think I think he's, I mean, you saw, did you guys watch Pays Vasco this year, how he won that? Yeah. I mean, that was pretty similar to yesterday, really. And, and I think um, he didn't need to do it. And if he... If he felt tired, he wouldn't have done it. You know, I mean, if he felt like, oh, this is risk, risking the welter, he wouldn't have done it. But um, he's just that good. Yeah, you obviously I with think... him at the tour, yeah, John. Go. You obviously with him at the uh, Tour de France in 2020. And I mean, that was bloody heartbreaking. You know, to lose it on the penultimate time trial. Do you think he's taken learnings from that, and and he's going to almost tweak the way he rides a Grand Tour, or do you think he's just always going to be the same as what he is? Uh, no, I don't think so. I don't think he. I, I mean, for sure he learned stuff, but the only thing you think he learned there is that he can't. He can't back himself to to beat Pogacar in a time trial. You know what I mean? He can't. Mm. On if there's everyone else, he can just take time bonuses and win, beat them in the time trials. But with Pogacar, he, he, you know, on on a good day, they're, they're pretty even. You know what I mean? Like, mm. so he needs to take other time somewhere else. So that's what he learned from that tour. But um, yeah, I think he. He he just likes to race like that, and and Pogacar also likes to race like that. He saw how he won the tour, mm. and like I think that's why it was pretty gutting for for cycling fans in general when he crashed out of the tour this year because that's what everybody wanted to see. And then there's a showdown coming, you know. There's a showdown coming in the future sure. where Bernal is in good nick. He's not in good nick at the Volta by his standards. Um, where Remco's, you know gets up for it and then you have the two civilian boys come together and, and that's going to be a that's kind of the showdown everyone's waiting for and, and hopefully that comes you know next year or, or the year after or something like that We've got a couple of live comments John just quickly uh, when he's super fan we do listen to it John talking about the social distance podcast of course <laughs> uh, Lisa Dimming says hi George are Primoz and Sepp as cool as they seem to be hope you're excited to be riding with today soon Today, oh, yeah, right, today. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> that other guy, you know the other one? Yeah. Not today and tomorrow, today. Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, you know, they're good blokes. Yeah, yeah, i got a lot of time for them. I mean, Sep uh, lives in my neck of the woods. Um, he's a good, yeah, great blokes. Got uh, definitely miss riding with them for sure. Um, but excited to ride with today. He also seems like a super, super good guy. So, um, yeah, no, they're, they're as cool as they seem. Will Wizard, he wants to know, I'm a real GB fan and I'm not a Kiwi. Can he believe he's going to get the same opportunities at UAE? Mm. Uh, more opportunities. Oh, that's good. Yeah. Um, no, for sure. Uh, so, no, well, I got, oh, okay. Uh, one, I got Go two more, two more. Uh, Pushkar says, hey, George, love from India. One question. What will you expect the dynamics of the Peloton to be after your switch to UAE? Will it be weird competing against Primoz, Sepp and co in the mountains? Yeah, I have actually thought about that. And um, it'll be weird, but it's an exciting. I, I quite look forward to it, actually, if you know, like the thought of going up against these guys. Um, and, you know, cycling, it's always like professional. You know, you do your job and this and that, or you go for the win and try not to you know try and leave it on the road and then and then come back in and but you know when you really know someone you've been riding with them for six seven years um of course there's there's personal elements involved and um you know and there's there's egos and grudges and, and all those things that that come into cycling and and um yeah I'm, I'm i think i think racing against them um Will, will be interesting, but you, you know, people always love to play up the whole showdown of Yumbo Visma versus Ineos or Yumbo versus EAE, UAE, or you know what I mean? And th these battles, and you can't worry just about one team. There's so many good riders mm. now from all these other teams. And if you're thinking, okay, I'm going to race against Jumbo Visma, yeah, and 20 other teams, so mm. you know, easy to, easy to for it to be nothing as well. Last fan question. And he's a big fan. It's Jason Cruz from the Amilla Resorts in the Maldives. Top of the afternoon. Hey, GB, will you get a chance at GC next year? 
Yes, yeah, that's one of the big big reasons behind the move um, as well. Uh, Going to target a few of the stage races, one week stage races, and then obviously be a helper a fair bit of the time as well with today and and some of the guys that are going there. But um, then hopefully have a crack at at another grandy uh, at some point as well. So um, yeah, definitely going to give it a nudge. And and I think you know with the way cycling's going now. You have to run a couple of GC guys. Um, like it, it helps not only in case one crashes out, but it also gives you another card to play. If you know, so you can send one up the road, force other teams to chase. So to keep a couple of guys in the in the classification is always super handy. Now you can go, John. Well, that was my question. <laughs> <laughs> oh, really? I really? Well, I really wanted to know, you know, what, what you plan to and what enticed you uh, to make the move. You know, was it was it your call or did you get approached? Um, well, it was it was something I've been thinking about for a while. You know, I've been seven years in the team, and that's a long, long time. And it's 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 been great, and I've really enjoyed it. Um, but you know, like I'm now coming into the best years of my career get stronger every year and this year's just been absolutely terrible in terms of um how the races have gone in terms of training and, and form everything's been far better than i've ever done and just you know it's always been sickness crashes weather all you know things that just have, have have just turned into a shocking year for me and um yeah and that sort of got me thinking you know maybe it is time to to mix it up you know new environment change and and you know the trajectory i'm going on Sometimes you just think, okay, if I change, it might be worse. Maybe I'm already running at 100%, or maybe a new environment can get more out of me. And it's a risk, and it's a exciting risk to to go somewhere. Who and, and and UAE really believed in me. You know, when we started talking to teams, these guys were ringing me all the time, going, "Look, this is what we want from you. This is what we can provide you." Um, and you just start looking at their, their science, you know, the, the resources they have, the stuff with Alan Piper's doing with the aerodynamics, the, um, you know, the trainers, the, the nutrition, everything around it. They just have so many, re- so much resources and, and they're building this super strong team. I mean, you look at the other guys they signed as well, um, that it just made me feel like, okay, this, this, these guys really know what's going on. And, and, um, if I'm going to make a change, <clears throat> From Jumbo, then these these guys seem like a the the best setup, and um, yeah, so far that's been my experience with them. They've been really really good, and um, you know, already been a few things getting ready for next year, and and yeah, very very good operation so far. I've got another question from Ryan. He says, "Would George not go for GC in the Vuelta with the weather being a bit uh, better than the Giro? He might not need those hot teas to stay warm." I think on the podcast <laughs> I suggested hot teas. You said that was like pissing on a bushfire. On those cold days. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I think I would like to have another, you know, uh, obviously today we're riding for the tour. Um, and there I think it's, it'll be running behind him. But, yeah, I'd love to maybe have a have a crack at the Vuelta again. Um, it was the first time I ever got top 10 the Grand Tour was there five years ago, something like that. Mm. So, um, yeah, I, I'd like to go back to the Vuelta and have a crack. Uh, and Will Wizard said, and a lighter bike, GB. Who are they riding? I'm obviously not obsessed with bike brands. Uh, Colin Argo. Oh, yeah. You've ridden a Colin know. Argo before? Nah, I don't I don't know. I don't think it will be lighter bike. Uh, maybe lighter than my aero bike. I don't know. I think they're the same. I think bikes are pretty much on the weight limit these days, aren't they? Our, bo- yeah. our bikes, their bikes. Scott Davies wants to know, how hard is it to move to new equipment? Is it a challenge or is it the gear so good that it's pretty much the same across brands and teams? Uh, no, it's tough because this time it's, you know, it's not just changing frames like we did last year, you know, from Bianchi to Zavello where we kept everything else handlebars, saddles. I mean, this time I'm getting new pedals, so you have a new cleat system, new saddles, new handlebars, new bikes. Then you have Campagnolo and see the Shimano. So every single thing is different, which makes it, um, which makes it a, a lot of getting used to. I mean, the shoes and the pedals and things, that's, that's the tough one. I'll be changing... Yeah, probably. Yeah. So all that stuff. So um, you kind of want to do it slowly and try and, you know, they're already measuring up bikes and looking at what I'm running this year and trying to sort of match it as close as they, close as they can with their brands. But um, yeah, it's a big change. 
It used to be tough. Back in the old, back in my day, your shoes, like now you buy a shoe and they you know, get the same brand and you can jump straight into a new pair of shoes. Back in the old days with leather soles, you wore them in. And I remember yeah. a tour, tour of Tassie, pouring rain, we had a lunchtime stop, and my old man whacked my shoes in the oven just to thaw them out a little bit and forgot about them. And they came out <laughs> all twisted at the right of the afternoon stage. Oh, bloody hell, that hurt. But anyway, let's go back to the old days. A couple of Tazzy's good for that, the old double stages. I was thinking I was there for six days and rode about 18 stages. Uh, <laughs> double stages. Days. So looking at the GC, if he, there's obviously been a shake-up. You've got Roglic on top, Mass in second. Uh, Lopez in third, and, and Jackie Haig, uh, he's only three minutes and 46 seconds behind. Has his How form this year? Yeah, I was going to say, what, what's your take on his form this year? Yeah, unreal. Super good. I mean, he looked in the tour already like he was going to do something special um, and had a pretty nasty break, collarbone, like far worse than a normal collarbone break. And I didn't think he'd – yeah, I just didn't think he'd be able to get back up in time. And, man, he's just – he he went up the start of the welter, lost a bit of time, and it looked like you know he was really paying for all that time off. And then he got on the break one day, took a bunch of time back, and ever since then he's been away. He's just he's back on form. So um, I think he's also quite fresh in terms of you know he didn't ride the whole tour, he didn't have a full build up, which I think is going to pay off for him uh, today, tomorrow, whatever, backing up in these big days. But they're into the meat of it now. If they get through today, uh, then you've got. Well, this is this is the profile for today's stage. Oh, okay. And where then, are we going? Oh, Cordal. It's a new climb. And then yeah. how do you pronounce that, Ify? Yeah, they reckon. They, well, they reckon it's. Oh, I'm not even going to attempt it. But they <laughs> they reckon that is uh, uh, the toughest. It's even. It makes yesterday's stage look easy. It's that steep. It's got ramps of twenty percent. It is a monster of a thing. So that bastards, that... eh? Those wealth organisers, they always sniff out these new roads. <laughs> yeah, I remember we did this one last muchachas or something, muchico, yeah. or, and they just sniffed out this climb and and they, you know, but a goat, like, goat track at the end, yeah. <laughs> and you're looking on Google Earth and there's nothing on there because it doesn't exist yet. And then they managed to find a truck to slab some concrete on there. And then, <laughs> but does that, does that have, how much does it shit you as a rider? Because we've talked a few times that final week mentally, even for the staff, you know, everyone's cooked at a granny. It doesn't matter which one you're doing, but that final week, are you obviously in GC, you have to look at the stages, but there must be a lot of guys that open the book and just go, Oh, you're shitting me. Like yeah, I know a like couple that. of guys that live like that and a couple of guys that, that operate Grand Tour Life by opening the book and going, oh, this is on tomorrow. And mm. they, they do it, they rip out the pages and then they look at the next day and they go, oof, all right. I, I know everything. <laughs> I know what's coming. Like, Yeah. Give me the pain now. Yeah, exactly. And, and also, like, I have to sort of, I, you know, you, you, you know, like, okay, is this a day? You need to know how many opportunities you got left or, or when to – when to squeeze, when to save, when to, you know, like you, it's a, you got you got to gauge your effort to the stage, but you've got to gauge your effort over three weeks as well, um, mm. which generally you just go on full gas every day if you're riding GC. But, um, yeah, you do, you, it helps to know, I think. We well, were well, talking to Jack Hag the other day, and he was talking about stage 18, and he said the good thing about having such a hard, steep climb is, like, there's nowhere to hide with your form. Like, you know, the, the longer, slower ones, people can mm. sort of get in position and that. Whereas this one, this final climb, like whoever's got the legs, it, it'll clearly show. Well, the thing with Hagee's, with, with that sort of train of thought, um, is when he says the good thing about it, it depends what side of the argument you're on. I mean, if you're creeping, <laughs> yeah. it's not yeah. good at all. <laughs> <laughs> well, he must well, be it, confident uh, if he's saying that then. Yeah. Tonight, it, it really, uh, I think it will decide whether Jack uh, can get onto the podium because all he's got to do is, is just hold Lopez because he'll take more than 30 seconds out of him in the final time trial. Mm. So he's three seconds down. So he's going to hold him uh, tonight, and I think he can get on, onto the podium. But, the reason uh, I'm back in Jack in here also is because there's daylight. Lopez knows this is his last chance. So Lopez will be going absolutely mental today. Mm. And he's good at this stuff, high altitude, steep. So, so Lopez will take, I'd say, a bit of time out of Jack today. But the only – or one, not the only thing, but one big – Tick in Jack's box, Jack's box, is that Jack he's got a super box. strong team. 
<laughs> Jack in the box. Uh, he's got a super strong team, and they're all pulling for him. You know, he's yeah. got um, Lander went home yesterday, but I think Walt Pools is there, um, Gino Maida, yeah. and, and they're all yeah. and they're all just laying on the line for him, and 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 they're letting you know Jack's a big guy. He can't follow the accel- accelerations like mm. let's say you you're more pure climbers or whatever. Um, mm. So he just lets them go, and they just pace him back, and then. <clears throat> Yeah, that seems to be working for him well. So I don't think he's going to lose too much time at all. When you get to this pointy end, how many guys do you need? Like if you're in form like, you know, Primoz is, he, he doesn't really need a lot of guys. But how many traditionally do you need, uh, you know, coming into this part of the of the Grand Tour? Oh, it's changing because, you know, when you're as good as Primoz, it means everybody's looking to flick you. So mm. um, it's like everyone just piles on. If you, you know, like, so obviously I got two guys, second and third. One of them goes up the road, and then you know everyone from fourth to tenth is looking at you, going, "Well, you know you're the strongest guy. You fix it." So actually, the better you are, the more guys you need, which is counterintuitive because you can't just follow everything. Mm. Yeah. Well, um, no, why don't we ask the man himself about the tactics for uh, <laughs> the sheriff? Welcome back, Neil. Uh, congratulations on yesterday's stage. It was a fantastic team ride to get around Jackie Haig. Were you happy with the boys? Oh, no. The Sheriff's internet. Yeah. Oh, no. Was, this... um, yeah, it was a, it was oh, a sorry, top right? day yesterday. Yeah. You with us? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, you're yeah, right. yeah, yeah, yeah. You're with us, mate. <laughs> am, am I? Yes, yes. Yeah, yeah, bloody uh, a really good ride left there by... By Jack and the boys, the um, yeah, they they, they knew when to react and uh, and go after those bloody jumbo Visma fellas that Ben and Georgie's got there. <laughs> they were uh, ripping it up yesterday, but um, yeah, bloody fantastic, you know. Like not only Jack was going good, the uh, the boys, you know, uh, Walt Pauls, uh, Caruso, uh, Gino, all the boys were going bloody fantastic, and so we end up we pull off not a bad result yesterday, and hopefully we can do something similar over the next couple of days. If he, I was just disappointed uh, with Mikel Lander pulling out. I mean, he obviously showed a bit of good form early in that stage. It was a big ride to get uh, from the from the back grip to the front. Uh, but then when the pressure came on, I, obviously he cracked a bit. But I just thought, hey, pull out and go home. I mean, seriously, didn't he? Couldn't he be there doing being some help for Jack? Yep, yep, spot on the money. <laughs> yeah. Oh, that's yeah. uh, okay. All right. Yeah, he's a he's a um, uh, you know, it's he's a, he's a he's a big champion. He's a uh, good bike rider, but um, you know, it would have been nice to, to yeah. He obviously is not going fantastic. He he tried to give it a bit of a test and see how he's going, and he and he, he must have made his own conclusions and worked out he wasn't he was performing below par. And um, yeah, it would have been nice if he had a thought that we might have needed him over the next couple of days. But anyway, it it is what it is, and um. All the best to him. Mm. Well, we, uh, we 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 spoke to Jack Haig the other day. The other day, and he, and he said this final climb, Neil. He said it's it's bloody good because it, it's really gonna, you can't hide. You know, if you have got the legs, it's going to show on that climb. Um, is he getting this sort of sheriff confidence rubbing off on him, mate? Because that's that's a statement of someone that he's confident in his legs. Yeah. No, it's it, and um, there's a we've got a young fellow in our team running 10th in the GC, yeah. Uh, uh, and he, he's a little bit like Georgie, you know, he's uh, he's very faithful, very um, dedicated to on the hard uh, up climber to Los Lagos. He just set a really nice pace in front of Jack, didn't uh, be phased by different people attacking and none, and he paced uh, Jack in to the final really once, yeah. This sort of climb suits Jack. He's you know like, like he's going to be like about an hour, um, yeah, just turn away on a pretty steep, pretty steep climb, some little smaller gears. So uh, hopefully, uh, Jim, you know, once uh, George does and pace our lead, there we go. Got most I, of that. I, I think I, the internet's I, I, I thought. In a bit there. I, I, I thought Maida was absolutely brilliant yesterday. As you say, wood, wood poles as well earlier on, especially. But in that last 3K when the pressure was really on, he just, the way he just, you know, let them 
picked the pace, grabbed them back gradually, just absolutely did it perfectly. Yeah. Mm. yeah. Boys, I'm going to shoot. But, um, yep. Neil, all the best, mate. Good to see uh, how the boys are going and everyone's back in Hague again for a, for a big one. So um, mate, all mate, the best from me. And I hope mate. those... Pricks don't give you too much trouble. Thank, thanks, George. Okay, hey, 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 Neil wants to respond. Quick message. Just, uh, George, I might just get you a, a couple of tips on how to go against them yellow teammates of yours. Kill the oh, wasps. Yeah. <laughs> hit them hard, hit them early. Hope for the best. <laughs> <laughs> Good on you, right, George. Hey, thanks for being on the detour, mate. See Appreciate you, guys. It. See you, mate. Yeah. <laughs> See you, George. Uh, I, th- I, thought, I thought you were going to respond with, hey, they piss in me pocket, Chad. <laughs> 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 nah, he's a good fellow, Georgie. Yeah, he is. Yeah. He is. Yeah. Um, we were just, just talking with him about, you know, he's jumping ship. He's leaving uh, uh, pre-mods and uh, uh, to go into today. So uh, not today, but very soon. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I, I he's, heard, he's heard heading a off of the tour of Britain. Britain. Yeah. Mm. So what what is the plan of attack today, Sheriff? Um, I don't know if it's a, it's a plan of attack for today or a plan of attack for the next few days. You know, today's mm-hmm. the uh, the lumpiest day. Uh, bloody hard finish up. The, I can't even pronounce this climb. And um, well, we're not trying. And, yeah, and then um, but basically, you know, the thing is, we're not in a bad spot. It'd, it'd be better if we can get closer to the lead. But at the moment, uh, you know, with uh, Jack's really worked hard on his time trial as well, um, hopefully we can pull a bit of time out of a couple of different rivals there. Um, yeah, so it's a bit of a trying to work out where to spend what energy and um, and how. And so uh, on, a, on a climb like today, that's really, there's the, the gloves are off, you know, like there's, it, it, you can attack, you can do whatever you want, but it's bloody hard, bloody long, and then you just all the best here, you know. The teammates really can't help yeah. you that much. So it's a matter of getting through today, working out, getting the pen and paper out again, and and trying to work out the next the calculations over the next few days as well. How important is that mindset, Neil? Is like with particularly younger riders riding within your limits and not sort of tipping them into the red. I remember back in the early days when you were dealing with Esteban, it was so calculated where you know you'd know where his body was at, you know you're working in with the team, and then it was all about managing those efforts. Yeah, it's a little bit, it, you're exactly right. And I think it's a little bit like um, spending your pocket money, you know. You get you know, get $5 off your dad every week and buddy, if you wash the cars and that sort of stuff. And then you can't be going out and spending buddy, $10 one week and then hoping to have uh, money for, for to go to the movies the next week, you know. Mm. And um, so it's just about whatever you spend today, well, then you haven't got it tomorrow. And just spending the right amount of energy, saving up and then maybe, Maybe in a couple of weeks' time, you can go to the movies. I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> it's a good analogy. But do you yeah. think yeah, that, that keeps... When I used to wash my dad's car, I used to nick it and go and uh, try and pick one of the birds up around the corner. But anyway, it's another story. <laughs> but, but do you think that that approach, Neil, it keeps the rest of the group calm because you're not riding on emotion? Uh, you, you break up there a little bit, mate. You, what, what, can you repeat that? I, I, I said, do you think that approach is also good for the rest of the group because it keeps them calm because you're not riding on emotion? Yeah, it's broken up once again. But the, the, the negative thing of this is that the biggies that they've got and uh, and everyone's sort of a bit scared of picking it up. But uh, once again, it, it adds for some great racing, you know, like, I know, for example, Adam, he was a bit limited yesterday. He had Bernal up the road. He was itching the pack and uh, uh, and he couldn't do it. They went in a bit of a gap. Uh, probably Lopez is a guy that can make a bit of a bit of an attack today. And then you got guys sort of just waiting for the time trial. And so everyone, you know, we, us directors, we sit down and try to work out who's going to attack when and what we can allow and what we can't do and that sort of stuff. And, and sometimes... We can't do much about it. We just have to take it on the chin. Mm. Ify? Yeah. My, my feeling on the, uh, on this uh, climb, if you can whack it up there again, it, it's got, as you see, ramps of, you know, 20%. And it's uh, Alto del Gramontida. That's, That's close my, enough. 
It's close enough. Um, it's a monstrous okay. thing. Oh. It hasn't, we haven't raced it before. <laughs> <laughs> but you like my Spanish, uh, uh, Neil? Is it good? <laughs> ah. Bono, bono. Yeah. <laughs> but L- L- Lopez is the, is the worry. That's who, who we all think that Jack's got to you know, keep close so he can beat him for, uh, for that third spot on the podium. But I reckon Lopez will probably take some time out of him when it gets that really steep. It might be a lot, maybe twenty seconds or whatever. Uh, but that—that's you know the Superman. That—that's what he loves. Those really steep, high altitude. It'd be very hard for Jack to completely contain him. Did you get that, Neil? Yeah. Sorry, mate. The, the internet's got a bit average. I got most of the most of that. But the thing is, for the for the punters at home. You there, mate? Uh, Never a dull day in the detour. Yeah, you're right, mate. <laughs> you got to pay that hotel bill, Neil. <laughs> oh, I'll try to. I'll try to keep on my my internet so it, at the same time. Yeah, no worries, mate. Why don't, why don't we take a quick drinks break, and then when we come back, the Wi-Fi will be cherry ripe. We'll only need yeah. another five minutes to pick the sheriff's brain. If you got time, okay. Yeah, that'd be great. All right, let's have a quick quick break. Look at this bike. You think it's just a bike, right? But it's not. It's a bike. 374 people are looking at. This guy, this girl, them, all looking at it. People from here, there, and wherever this is. People that are looking for a bike. Or just a piece of it. Amateurs, semi amateurs, and pro amateurs. This guy wants this bike, but with this crank and these bars, this could be the perfect match. But not this one. This girl has a bike to sell, and thousands of people might purchase it. Eyes on bikes help grow small businesses. His, hers, yours, and the latest data and insights help those businesses keep moving. We are the world's number one bike marketplace with over 500,000 products and 900 brands where buyers and sellers are brought together in a place where a bike is never just a bike. Bike Exchange, where the world buys, sells, learns and rides. Life is like a two-way street. It's about consideration and mutual respect. Roads are much the same. However you get around, walk, ride or drive, if we share our roads, we can all be safer. The Amy Gillett Foundation is Australia's peak cycling safety charity. Our mission is for safe cycling in Australia. Our vision is for zero cyclist deaths. Over the last year, we've seen an enormous increase in people taking up cycling, whether it be for recreation, with the family, commuting, or even to start your own cycling career. We need to do more to make it safer for every cyclist. 20 cyclists every day are hospitalised and one cyclist is killed every 10 days on Australian roads. So, the next time you jump on your bike or hop in your car, remember to practice the four C's. Be courteous, calm, considerate and conscientious. Every cyclist's death is preventable and we all deserve to get home safely. Please donate to help the Amy Gillett Foundation make the road safer for you and for me. Thanks again to Bike Exchange and the Amy Gillett Foundation. We've got Sheriff for another five minutes. Ify, what was the last question okay. you asked before I cut out? Well, just talking about it's just so steep on those uh, that, that last climb that it will probably suit Lopez a little bit more. It'll be very hard to contain him completely. Yeah. Um... Obviously, the, the best coverage of the welter is here on the on the detour. But um, anyone that's watching <laughs> the, the the race on telly, um, you can probably compare the climb today to uh, El Angliro, which we've we've done on many other occasions. And I know you, Dan, you've seen that before. And um, it's a little bit there's not, less ramps, uh, but it's a lot more constant. And so, I tend to think that today, uh, obviously. Uh, what per kilo so how fast you can how strong you are per kilogram is really important some a little fella like lopez or, or adam yates obviously got a bit of advantage over uh, over jack but um i tend to think that when uh, when it's that steep 
your teammates a bit of a psychological help to you, but it's actually not that much physical help. There's no drafting as such. And so um, basically you get there. Uh, I know Jack's just going to, yeah, he'll probably just do his own pace. Whether Lopez is a couple of yards in front of him or, or, or a couple of, yeah, like 20 seconds, it doesn't really matter. He's just going to pace his energy from the bottom to the top, which may even take up towards an hour. And um, and hopefully the calculations come out more on our side than, uh, than Lopez's. Brilliant. Yeah. I think uh, that's some fantastic insights, Sheriff. Is there anything else? Nailed it. You've nailed it. No, that's perfect. It's really exactly what I yeah. reckon as well. <laughs> well, just the yes, final that. one from me. How much left over from that five bucks is in Jack's account? With, oh, no, no, he's, he's going okay. He's uh, got his pocket money from last week as well. He's ready to go. Yeah, so, good. Uh, he's he isn't blown at the cinemas. At, uh, he's, yeah, going down to the cinemas, getting a bit of popcorn. And so uh, <laughs> he, he should be right to go. Well, We'll have a chat in a couple of days if you like and work out if I was right or wrong. Uh, yeah, okay. <laughs> now, you mentioned uh, last time we were talking to you, you had your, uh, your, your, your bag with your laptop and everything, credit cards pinched. Have they found it? No, no good news there. Actually, a little bit of bad, more bad news. That, well, I think I might have mentioned the other day, I put him in an insurance claim and they're going to... Like, out of the one and a half thousand euros I've spent to try to replace things, they've kind of reimbursed me with two hundred. So that yeah, there's a call out <laughs> for the insurance mob to do a little bit better. And um, and uh, and actually, I had I had the last twenty euros in my pocket last night, uh, and I bought me me the other teammates, uh, me directors, in a, a beer for his son's birthday. So that was it. I'm uh, I'm now three days from or four days from the end of the world, so I haven't got a cent to me name, and. Uh, <laughs> Looking for a for a good result, see if it'll pick me pick me spirits up a bit. Oh, <laughs> Thanks for bringing oh. it up, John. Perfect. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, you'll find a way, Neil. You'll find a way, and I'm sure the champagne will be free if uh, it all goes to plan, mate. So uh, keep up the good work, yeah. and we'll check in in a couple of days and see if there's any money for the candy bar. Okay, good on you, fellas. <laughs> Thanks, Neil. See you, Neil mate. the Sheriff Stevens. It's <laughs> always entertaining. This is the Sheriff. Uh, is he? He's a bloody is he? ripper. Yeah. But that's a, uh, as I was saying, like his ability when I was at Greenwich is to just keep the group centered. Like it, there was no emotion; it was all very calculated and riding within your limits, you know. And and that does, I think, and obviously I'm not a rider, but I would think that that has a massive calming effect on the rest of the group when you know it's not just based on emotion. Like you know, oh, we got to watch this guy. And if he goes, you go with it. It's all just following the process. So. Mm. Well, Jack, you know, Neil, had, Neil had to go through a process to get to that spot because I can remember the real early days. Oh, yeah. Neil, Neil was very emotional. <laughs> yeah, no, he did. He did. He definitely, definitely evolved. Um, yeah, so how are we going with the uh, silent auction, Ify? Um, well, I know that uh, we have someone who's been trying to um, – they came through Facebook and were trying to get my mm -hmm. uh, email address. They were trying to email me. They have a bid uh, uh, in their your, mind. But I, You got your script? I have. All right. Well, have. It's all before good. we... Uh, discover a tropical playground of powdered sugar sand, lush jungle and crystalline waters. Milo Maldives Luxury Resort reeks of timeless style and endless bliss. Stand by for unexpected treats and indulgences. Delighting and surprising you is their hallmark. The Miller's motto is to exceed your expectations. The sky is the limit. Fantastic, mate. Just absolutely nailing it. And, of yeah. course, uh, the silent auction, if you join us for the first time, it is uh, five nights at a waterfront villa, and it's for two adults and two children. That's breakfast and dinner. Um, and it's worth thirteen and a half thousand dollars Aussie, and the current bid is at five thousand two hundred fifty. I think Johnny. It is, but evidently there is someone in the wings, yes, because uh, yeah, uh, who didn't get my email right. So there it is. It's John at cyclingevents.com.au. dot um, au, and um, yeah, just put your put it through to that. Um, also, I just want to say we've we, we, we've been talking about uh, the D two a lockdown blues mm -hmm. because there are some people getting who are struggling. I was talking to a couple of mates today, and, and one of them was having a little bit of trouble, and the mm -hmm. other one 
his wife is having a lot of trouble, just, you know, just can't look at, the, you know, what's in the news, it's getting her depressed. So I said, well, you've got to help people. So you've got to set some things to do in your day and, and have someone to talk to. Make sure she's got a girlfriend she can call and, uh, you know, so, yep. Yeah. You mark this oh. guy. There you go. Sorry, I'm about to go to Dean. Um, yeah. So, but but I've been getting some wonderful uh, uh, emails from people. So I've been having a chat with them, you know, online. Um, and, and it's nice to know you're helping. It, 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 uh, some people are really, uh, you know, it's getting them down. And the chaos of the Detour podcast is getting people through the fun and yeah, games. because a lot of the times they're watching it, going, "Geez, thank God, I'm not trying to." Navigate that <laughs> nightmare. They probably feel better about their own routine. But I think I think another good tip, right, is there's different levels of people, you know, feeling off. You know, sometimes it's good in the right moments when someone's a little bit off, and you know, you sort of give them a helping hand and you pass on some tips and whatever, and they can take it. But then there's sometimes that if you've got friends that are genuinely depressed, what you don't want to do is project too much when they're in that moment. If that makes sense, what you just yeah. want to do is listen. And just encourage them to talk as soon as because then they can get frustrating because if you're trying to talk to someone that is in like a depressed like state, they don't want to listen to go on. Yeah, but come on, you can do this and come on. They don't want to hear that. All, all you got to do is encourage them to just keep talking because then the next day, hopefully they, they feel a little bit better. And just being that person that can talk to it, it's huge. It's huge. It definitely makes a difference. Uh, Velo McVilly, so quickly. Last night's entry is open for the detour kit comp. Design it at apexcustomclothing.com.au. That's obviously designing the detour kit for the detour delegates. Uh, and the top three are going to be selected by Katie from the uh, Amy Gillett Foundation. And then you're going to be able to vote on which which design you like the best. So, well, John, Katie, good. so yeah. no, no, and but just to talk a bit more about that. So we're talking about uh, the detour kit. So we're asking. Anyone who wants to come and uh, uh, join us at uh, Amy Gillett's uh, Great Ocean, uh, Ocean Road uh, Grand Fondo um, can, can be a part of our detour group. We're going to all have breakfast together. We'll have some fun. We're going to get this kit uh, designed and made. But you, you can buy the kit anyway. Anyway. You know, you know, yeah. Whether you're doing the ride or whether you're yeah. in, in Britain or South Africa or, 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 or in the States, like a lot of our uh, um, our listeners are, um, please be a part of this. So it's an exciting part. So uh, And you, you buy the kit and the monies will go to the Amy Gillett Foundation. There you Here's go. some examples. Yeah, these I'll are the. Like I'll show one. you the. I'll show you the bright ones because obviously they want them bright because it is about road safety. Uh, here's another one. Iffy. It's quite mm -hmm. bright. Mm -hmm. uh, this that that's yeah. a nice looking kit. It's obviously got yeah. a bit of black on it. Uh, this is just all out. This is yeah. it looks like uh, M and M's. Um, and this one as well. It's sort of like a, yeah. a fluoro camo setup. So there's been heaps <laughs> of great designs. Uh, but keep it, keep them all coming and, and yeah, go to the website because it's on their landing page and that's apexcustomaus.com and Vaughn and the team will uh, will sort you out. But you've got one more day because they're gonna Katie's gonna select the top three designs and there's a message to Amy Gill Foundation. We're so excited, so we're excited to uh, get to the pointy end. I just got a, a, a text from Katie. Uh, now, Katie Brown is a superstar, as you know, but uh, she's the, the, the marketing guru in at the Amy Gillen Foundation. And, of course, uh, she was a champion cyclist herself, and she was in that tragic uh, uh, accident that took uh, Amy, Amy's life. So um, she's been on the journey, and she was very lucky uh, to be able to walk again herself. So she's very much a part of this. Yeah. And uh, well, we don't um, want to upset her and the foundation. So it's sort of like you guys pick the top three. You're happy with that. <laughs> if there are any but also, it's on you. But, but we haven't been pushing it a lot at the moment because everything's up in the air. I'm sure that the Amy uh, Gillett ride will go ahead because it's, you know, not till the end of October. But, um, you know, we'll we'll fingers crossed and all something. of that. Well, fingers crossed and all of that. But um, we are going to have uh, some giveaways, uh, three giveaways to, to people to to uh, to take the ride. So uh, we're going to have a little uh, competition. We'll wait. Till we'll get the uh, the world's out of the way, and then we'll uh, come up with a, a little competition. People who can get involved and yeah. submit who you want us to try and get on the show. Um, we've already had Samantha say, hey, lads, any chance of getting Mitch Docker on before Paribu Bay? 100%. We can get uh, 
Mitch. Yeah. And Will Wizard says, how about a wrap for Luke Durbridge in the Benelux Tour? He ran third. Uh, yes, yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, great effort. Um, uh, well, he's a superstar, isn't he? And uh, interestingly, we, we, he'll, uh, we're talking about our we're going to be talking straight after the Vuelta about the best Australian team you can put together right now with all of these superstars. If you, you had an uh, Australian team and could just pick any Aussie that's uh, riding in the pro scene or about to. And so uh, Scotty McGorry and uh, Dan and I are going to uh, get involved in that, so we'll have some fun with that. Um, well, you'll pick, you'll pick your best team for the classics, your best team for the Grand Tours, who will be the protected GC right? I think it would be a good debate. It would be a great yes, debate. We're going to pick but between, because you've told we're going to everyone early, Caleb. some yeah. other show might pinch the idea. So if you see it on oh, some other problem. show. Yeah. <laughs> We've got to pick between Caleb and Robbie McEwen for the sprinter. Because <laughs> Robbie's no, made the cut. Is, is this of all no, time or is this the current? No, race? no, it's current, current. Robbie's made the comeback. Oh, yeah, right. <laughs> hey, uh, Gary Tilly, sorry I missed your question. Hey, Steve Oslander riding with you guys next year. That was funny. <laughs> <laughs> that was funny. When you asked me that question, I see that vein filling up with blood. Yeah. I was like, red cross. Oh, 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 oh. He got the red. He got the red cross. And he was just sort of swallowing his tongue a bit. He's like, yep. <laughs> yep, that would have been good if uh, he hung around for a couple of days. But anyway, that uh, is classic sheriff. Uh, anything you want to add before we go? If he who's your yeah, tips well, uh, for uh, the stage? Kate, Katie said Spratty just got married too, but she obviously wasn't watching last night's show because he had a picture of uh, 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 a wedding yeah, photo of Katie up there and her uh, 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 new partner, Amanda, which was yeah. You I said Katie Spratty. up there. A uh, Spratty, I thought I said. Only anyway, well, I meant to say Spratty. Yeah. Um, and uh, yeah, so we, we we didn't forget that. And uh, yeah, yeah. Who, who's your tip for stage 18? If he this is going to be a ripper, it mm. really is going to be a ripper. Uh, I'm going to go with Adam Yates. Adam Yates, that's a good one. Oh. Well, he loves these really steep climbs, and he's just far enough down that, yeah, that. Primos won't worry. I mean, Primos actually could probably four do minutes it again. forty-five behind. Yeah, yeah. yeah, I'm talking about. He'll probably go in the last. It'll be all going in the last four or five k, and and uh, Primos won't won't chase him down. That's what I think. But it's just an out there. I mean, if you're going on form, you'd say Primos. I mean, mm. um, yeah, hard to see him uh, not being there. Uh, but Superman will also be. Uh, a hard, hard boy to beat. Mm. Fellow McVilly, bling. No, not today, <laughs> mate. Not today, mate. Well, we'll be back uh, tomorrow, 6.30 p.m. Australian Eastern Standard Time at the normal time to unpack a massive Stage 18. Uh, keep supporting the show, as we said at the top. Uh, subscribe, youtube.com forward slash the Detour Podcast. And uh, keep entering the competitions and keep putting in your bids for the silent auction. We appreciate all the support. And uh, we'll see you again tomorrow, 6.30 p.m. Cheers.